This is Lewis Up for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store, Forged Irish Stout, Freebets.com. Delighted to be joined with Mark Tibbs here on a nice Tuesday afternoon um, on Zoom. How are things there, mate? How are you been keeping? Yeah, lovely, Louis. Not too bad. <clears throat> I've just um, I've just not long come back from Spain. I had a holiday there with my son and my wife and uh, my brother's grandson. So feel uh, don't look it but i feel lovely and fresh <laughs> absolutely good to hear mate and and definitely with the start of um start of the year that your stable has had obviously had johnny fisher in good wins and um, tommy fletcher and john hedges both in good wins um I suppose on the same day as well so happy with everything how it's coming along uh in 2024 so far yeah i couldn't be more happy to tell the truth all the boys are in a good uh putting themselves slowly but surely in good uh positions um Johnny Fish obviously is a Southern Area champion and uh, moving up the rankings nicely and, and steady and uh, coming on really nice since he's, uh, he won that, that area title for sure. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's, uh, he, he's he, he, he lives, he's got his own house now. He's, uh, he's, he's cooking for himself and uh, he's doing all things that you know, young gladiators should be uh, doing uh, if they want to be champions. Yeah. <laughs> Not having too much Chinese, though, is he? Well, listen, if he is, he's going to pay the price. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. Um, Obviously, at first, we'll touch on Johnny in a minute, but I did want to start. Um, You've obviously got two guys with two fighters with dates so far. Um, Joe Bartel on out on the 27th of April and Giorgio Vizioli on the 25th of May. Um, We'll start with Giorgio. Um, obviously, he was meant to be on the Sheffield card a few weeks ago, but I do believe he fell ill. So, uh, good to suppose make up for lost time and uh, and fight on the on the Taylor Catterall too, Bill. Oh, it's, a, it's a fantastic uh, card to be on, and we was all uh, myself and his manager and uh, and George himself was all stringing it along to try and try and he had this he had this constant cough that won't go away. And uh, and he gave it a lot, a lot of time, uh, the most time he could. And in the end, he had to bail out. And it, it was such a shame because he's had two emphatic wins in, in good, great fashion uh, and building good momentum. But he's still a young man. So, listen, everything happens for, for the best. And the wise move was for him to pull out of that fight. And, and he's landed himself on the, like you say, on, 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 on the... Uh, you know, the Taylor Catchell card, you know, it's a fantastic card to be on. What a show that's going to be. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. And, and when it comes to Giorgio, it's clear the ability he's got. He's a very, very good fighter. Um, But is it important, like, if he, he, he keeps getting these fights, he keeps getting these knockouts, would you look at it as like you'd like to see him get moved quickly um, and moved higher up the rankings or sort of taking it as it comes fight by fight due to his age and stuff? Listen, you, you know, you got to take it fight by fight because of uh, his hate his age you know what i mean yeah. and and i've always done that you take it fight by fight but um you know you you, you move you move them as you sh- should move them you know what i mean if you've got to slow it down you slow it down if you've got to move them you move them but listen um he's he, he's he's doing brilliant but listen he's only had two professional bouts yeah. <laughs> so yeah so so you know what i mean so we can't uh He's he, listen. He can't move him any faster. He's doing. He's doing. You know. He's getting great jobs on, on good on good cards, and uh, he's producing the goods. He's a great liver, and uh, he's uh, he's performing, and he's he's, he's re- receiving the war- rewards because of his the, the the input he puts in. Definitely for sure. For sure. Did want to get onto Joel Bartel as well. Um, was obviously meant to fight Liam Wells. Um, I don't think I think, don't think that fight's not happening no more. But he's back in a in a ten rounder, so a big big step up for, for Joel and, and something that I'm sure you're you're excited for as well. Yeah, he's in, he's in with a twelve and 0, 13 and 0 guy. I think he might have lost one of them. Uh, Southpaw, which is you know we don't always welcome Southpaws, but you know Joel Joel see Joel um, is moving pretty fast. Uh, when you think about it, he's in, he's in a he's not in a rush, but very confident in himself and uh, strong, mature, good liver as well, and a uh, very good, very good operator as well. Very, very little hard nut. Yeah, I was <laughs> gonna getting say- cute. He's getting yeah. cute. He's getting cute and uh, getting smart with it. And uh, it is a step up. It is a step up. But I every co- bit of confidence. He'll handle, he'll handle uh, Lamotley's name. He's Kyle Lamotley. Yeah. He's uh, up, up from the Midlands. But uh, 
Liam Wells' fight fell through. I never heard of Liam Wells, with all due respect, but everyone knew him around here. Yeah. And uh, I was told what a good fighter he was and what a, what a good engine he had and all of that. And uh, yeah. so I was disappointed with that. And we 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 obviously, you know, he pulled out that fight. Uh, I don't know what for what reason. <clears throat> and we've got a, we had another guy called Lamotley, Carl Lamotley, who's uh, probably wouldn't have chosen myself, but we've got him, and uh, it's in a ten round fight. It'd be great, absolutely for sure. And I'll say, are you happy? Would you say you're, you're happy with Joel's progress so far? He's fought a lot of you know tough, tough fighters so far, tough journeymen that people, I suppose, would struggle to get out of there. And he's, he's been showing good performances and getting knockouts as well. So happy with the progress that he's shown so far in his pro career. Yeah, um, Louis, I'm always, uh, I shouldn't be too hard on my guys, but I always find, I always find faults. It's only because I want the best for them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, he's, uh, he's been up against good, decent opposition that, that welcomed the fights. They've, you know, they've, they've probably been 50 50s. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but every job he has, he, he, he's, he's done really, really well. I think he's only been the distance once. So he had five fights. So, yeah. so you know, credit to him and uh, his manager, um, Richard Richard Maynard, uh, finding him the fights that uh, are going to develop him, hopefully get him onto bigger platforms. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Did want to ask also He's about Johnny Joe Bartell is worthy of all the other platforms. Definitely. I'm telling you now, the beast, the beast from the, from the East. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, mate, for sure. Um, I did also want to obviously ask about Johnny Fisher. We were talking about him earlier. Um, coming off the back of a great win in America and obviously winning the Southern Area title as well. Do you think like the time is now that he can really mix it with you know very, very good domestic level opposition? Well, Johnny's got time on his side. He's uh you know, he hasn't he didn't have the greatest of pedigrees, <clears throat> but he's proving a lot of people very, very wrong. And I've got to be in my bonnet and I'll, <laughs> because I want to prove people wrong myself. Yeah. yeah. And um, and he's won the Southern Area title in great fashion. But what was good about that, he tweaked his performance like a good veteran, experienced guy does during them yeah. rounds. He looked a bit raw at first, but tweaked it beautiful and done and box of orders. And, and done brilliant. I've been watching, um, only caught up on the Wardley fight and Clark fight yesterday, you know, because, yeah. you know, I've known, I've known <clears throat> Fabio Wardley since I saw him years and years ago in the Peacock gym, yeah. just hanging about. And I, I asked him and welcomed him down to Loughborough University as far with Dillian. So yeah. I've known him since, since the very, very beginning of his career. And we've done, Dillian's done, obviously done, bundles of rounds with, with, with Fabio and so I know Fabio very, very well and I continued my relationship with, with Fabio with Johnny Fisher. Yeah. We've done we've done we've done hundreds of rounds ourselves. So and Fraser Clark once about four or five years ago come into the Lucky University when when Dillian was uh, fighting, I believe it was Joseph Parker, wandered in. And I'll be honest with you, we only had about two weeks left and I didn't want yeah. heavy, heavy sparring. Mm-hmm. And Fraser Clark was a bloody machine, man. Yeah. And he and he'd done three round, three or four rounds with Dillian. And listen, I'm telling you, I didn't need it. I didn't want yeah. it, didn't need yeah. it. We was pay-per-view, but Dillian, no, no, I want to carry on, want it, want it, want it. Yeah. Oh, oh mate, and that was on the Wednesday, and he was coming back on the Friday. I was thinking, oh, please yeah. don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> Hey, listen, man can fight. Seen him, yeah. right? And anyway, obviously, I watched him the other night, and uh, yeah. he, he done well. But we've done with 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 um, with Johnny Fisher. We've had some work with with Fraser. You know, I don't know Fraser that well, like I know Fabio. But on my experience with him, with uh, both of them guys, I knew that would be a 50-50. And yeah. yeah, and it was. I watched it last night for the first time, and yeah, it was a good fight. Uh, I thought Fraser had a, a little bit more finesse, but he was entitled to. You know yeah. what I'm saying? A little bit more mm-hmm. that pedigree showed, but uh, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. Yeah, I suppose for that fight, would you would you like to see the rematch? Yeah, I would. I'd like to see the rematch for sure. 
when it, I suppose, when it comes to domestic level opposition, I think a lot of people have linked Johnny Fisher with a fight potentially against David Adelaide, um, which is obviously a former opponent of Fabio Warnley who dealt with him in quite comfortable fashion. Um, ideally, that would be a fight you'd definitely be interested in, one with David Adelaide. Yeah, I'd like that fight for Johnny Fisher, for sure. David Adelaide, yeah. Absolutely, for sure. I suppose we'll stick on the topics of heavyweight division because it is a uh, live and, and thriving at the moment. Um, about a month away now between uh, for Fury, Tyson Fury against Alexander Rusik. I'm sure you've been asked for your thoughts on it multiple, multiple times. But um, how excited are you for the fight now? And I suppose with the delay, makes it a little bit more exciting. And, and I suppose what's your sort of breakdown and, and thoughts on, on the fight between Fury and Usyk? Yeah, well, I've always fancied uh, Fury because the obvious reasons, the bigger animal, you know, the natural heavyweight, uh, as opposed to the pumped-up cruiserweight. Um, but he is a superior boxer and probably could have, or does handle handle all the heavyweights, top heavyweights in the world, you know, you know, including um, Nancy Joshua. He's beat him twice. But... Um, I, it does the cut the cut threw me a bit threw me a bit but um but you know I have to back I have to back my guy Tyson Fury our own guy yeah just because but um <clears throat> he would have his work cut out but I still think because he's the bigger animal unless unless he he under prepares you know it could go wrong for him but I'm backing Tyson Fury I think he'd have um He'd, knuck, he'd, have, he'd have knuckled down for this fight. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And when it comes to a naturally bigger guy fighting a smaller guy, I know at heavyweight, um, there there's can be quite big weight discrepancies. What do you think keys to victory could be? Well, I suppose when you are a smaller guy like Usyk fighting someone who has a natural side advantage over you like Tyson Fury does? Well, well, Tyson knows uh, just because of the wealth, the wealth of experience he's had, he will know, see, Guys that ain't had that much experience, it, it could bother them. The, 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 you know, the smaller, superior boxer, you know, boxer, bigger guys, it, it's off. But Tyson will know um, how to front hand him, front hand him and manage him, uh, you know, and get him on his heels a little bit, uh, you know, bit man a little bit. We're still boxing, but, you know, bit man and stop uh, looking pretty like he yeah. always does. So only a man of a wealth of experience could do things like that. So that's why I think uh, I think he's equipped Tyson Fury with all of them. But listen, I, I, I can't but not I can only admire um, Alexander Ruzik as well. Great, great yeah. boxer. I love love how he prepares. Love his training. Him as a human a human being is, yeah. you know, what you know he's a spot on guy. But uh, boxing wise, I just feel at their at their best of their peaks and their games, Tyson Fury is too big. And um, you mentioned there about Fury. The only way that Fury could lose would be a potential of him under preparing. Is there a worry? Do you think when it comes to Tyson Fury dealing with the cut, um, and especially how he looked against Ngannou, that there could be, I suppose, maybe it may be a bigger issue in a sense of, of maybe Fury may be over the hill, as some claims would say. Yeah, there is uh, <laughs> there is that 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 cloud over people's heads that uh, you know that could be that could be that could um, well be um, it could well be uh, you know a little bit weathered and worn and over the hill, but uh, only time will tell. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I did also want to ask you that about another heavyweight fight. Um, not officially confirmed, but I think uh, we might have a better idea this time next week. Um, Deontay Wilder potentially could be taking on uh, Gilles Zhang on the 1st of June. Um, ideally, would be headlining the five versus five um, between Eddie and Frank Warren. Um, what do you make of that fight? Uh, two two big, big punchers um, who are both obviously coming off losses as well. Yeah, uh, I, fancy, uh, I fancy Zhang. In that fight, uh, again, too big, too big, too natural, um, too well scored. Uh, he might be old ish, <laughs> he might yeah. be old, but he's too big and too natural. He would have no out, uh, against uh, against um, Wilder. You know, Wilder will have to crack him and crack him and crack him to break that big tree down, and I just feel that, um. He'd have too much know-how, Zhang would. 
for sure. I, I suppose in general, what do you make of the, the, the five versus five of Matchroom and Queensbury? You sort you've obviously got fighters on Matchroom side and the Queensbury side as well. Um, so but to see them working together and almost in a competitive sense like this, something from a fan must be very very exciting. Uh, it is really exciting, and, it, and it's nice. At first, I thought, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah. Because uh, you know you like the competitiveness, but no, I think it's brilliant for boxing. And uh, I'll be honest, yeah, I've always uh, trained professional fighters. Um, I've never, I've never, you know, I've never, I, I couldn't afford to not to to try. You know what I mean? I couldn't. Uh, I've trained people from from Queensbury, from from Matram, uh, and you know. BT and whatnot, but I've always done that, and not from my choice. It's just I develop a relationship, a relationship with a fighter, and, it, and yeah. if if we click and we can make it work, we make it work. You know, I don't, I don't, uh, you know. So it's nice to see the promoters working together, the top promoters. Yeah, for sure, Frank and Eddie, one hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just a, cu- a last couple ones from myself. Um, you mentioned we were talking about earlier about you obviously having Giorgio Vizioli on the Josh Taylor versus Jack Catterall two card. Um, that fight's obviously coming up, so did want to get your thoughts on, on Taylor versus Catterall. Um, a big, big spoke grudge match in a sense, grudge rematch. Uh, I'm sure you'll be you'll be tuning in uh, very interesting in Leeds uh, on the 25th of May. Yeah, I can't wait for that. It's really, really good. A real needly fight in it as well. Uh, fiery character in, in Taylor. And Catrell, one slick, one slick boxer, very, very slick and quick, and uh, he's he's really he's really good. I know what I can't, uh, you know, it's difficult for me to uh, to to pick. I don't keep my eye on him too much, and yeah, yeah, of course. you know, it's difficult. It's difficult. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Taylor, yeah. Taylor, Taylor's not, not, I don't know, I don't see a lot of him, but what I've seen of him, Cadrill looks, looks, you know, I wouldn't say he got his number, but um, I can't wait for it. I really can't pick a winner. Definitely. And when it comes to fighters in, in high tempered, you know, Ill, ill-tempered fights where, where there's a lot of emotion on the line, how important is it as a coach that their mind is straight before they go into the ring? You know, I'm sure you've had it examples before of when Dillian was fighting Derek Chisora alone, but them two times, how ill-tempered that was. Um, how important is it that the, the the fighters' minds is right before they do step in the ring? And I suppose they're not fighting on emotion in the sense. Yeah, no, well, listen, look, fire. Belly fire is good. Fire. You have to have fire in that belly. And, uh, and fire is good. But, but, you know, you've got to control your emotions. You, you have to control your emotions. Otherwise, you lose control. You literally lose control. Yeah. And uh, you're probably going to regret it. So them fighters are highly trained, regardless of the heated moments they have. They yeah. know what they're doing. They're very yeah. professional boxers. Don't underestimate them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, for sure, mate. No, um, yeah. no but, Just... but if, if you get what I'm saying, they, 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 yeah. listen... It's all in the moment stuff, but they're professional boxers. When the bell goes, they go about their business. And I'm sure them two will too. Definitely, for sure. Um, I suppose just as we close this off, Mark, um, we did speak a little bit about your stable at the start, but is there anyone else I was missing out on? Uh, anyone anyone that's... Uh, got Tommy Fletcher. Tommy, Tommy Fletcher is um, is with uh, TNT, BT, Frank Warren, Queensbury. He's, uh, he's prepping, prepping really, really well. Very, very, very good. And uh, yeah. I think he'll have an announcement very, very soon as well. And um, he's moved down to, to not not too far from where I live. And uh, yeah. so he's closer to the gym and it's really, he's got heavier. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's really enjoying it down here in Essex. And uh, it, it's showing in his, uh, in his well-being. And um, yeah, he's looking very, very, very good, I've got to say. So he will be making an announcement very, very soon as to a fight date. Definitely. Brilliant to hear. Mark, as always, thank you for taking time to speak to me. Always good to catch up. And yeah, hopefully see you soon, mate. Top man, thank you. Thanks, Louis. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate.